uh, April 16, 2018 meeting of the County Commissioners. We'll start our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first on the agenda, we have our county attorney, Matt Shipman. Um, the only thing I wanted just to give a little brief update on is, you know, there's ongoing um, dealing with the, trying to find a lawyer on the intelligent thing. We actually found a lawyer who has, on behalf of their client, filed a lawsuit against intelligent down in Florida. And in conversations we've had with her, she's been diligently working on behalf of that client to recover against intelligent down there and has found no assets. And so um, I have asked her to give me a quote, which I hopefully will have for the next meeting, of whether or not she would do the same for us. But it sounds to me at that point, at this point, that it's a waste, frankly, of money. But I wanted to at least present that to you. So um, other than that, I've got a couple contracts to review that will come up, I'm sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay, next uh, we have Nathan Bilger, who is our planning and building director on some plats. Lay him right there, Nathan. Thank you, Mr. Amber. I have three plats, which hopefully you've had a chance to review. Uh, let's, see. let's start with, sorry, John Blakely, the plat of John Blakely. This is a one lot flat up on Elder Road. The Plan Commission, County Plan Commission, uh, approved this at their March meeting. And the purpose of this is to split the house and adjacent pond off of the overall uh, property. As you probably know, there's a campground up there. So he's splitting that off and I believe selling the camp or intending to sell the campground in the future. Oh. Yes, thank you. I'm, I move we approve this one Second. with John Blakely. Okay, we've got a motion to approve the John Blakely uh, uh, plat approval. Uh, we've got a second. Any further discussions? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Oppose the same. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you. Uh, plat number two is called the Tincture Resort. And this is down on the south side of the county. Uh, again, this is actually a two lot plat. Uh, it's a split of one property into two lots. Uh, the purpose of which is the owner would like to build a new house and rent off the existing house that's on the property. Uh, of note, on this one, uh, it's somewhat unusual that because the lot line actually splits the existing pond. And so, as you might read in the covenants there, there are actually a, uh, there's actually a covenant in there dealing with the maintenance of that pond uh, in order to prevent future issues um, with who will maintain that. And it has been approved by the plan. Yes, sorry. The, all three of these were approved at <laughs> okay. the March meeting. Make a motion we approve this one. We've got a motion to approve. Second. We've got a second. <coughs> Any further discussions? Yeah, this this caused uh, I brought considerable discussion at the planning commission meeting over the splitting of the pond off, mm -hmm. and uh, it was approved to put it in the covenants so that it wasn't a didn't turn into a real issue down the road someday. Yes. And uh, basically the way the covenant is worded, uh, the owner of one of the lots assumes the maintenance of the event, of the entire pond, which was a little surprising, but that's his choice. So. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, the same. And thank you, Tom. Uh, so wait a minute. This, this went with the Blake lead. Okay. Okay. Um, and the last one here is 
um, another one uh, on the north side of the county uh, near Anderson Road. Uh, this one is again splitting off the house from the overall farm, farm acreage and it too was approved at the uh, March meeting. Move we approve this. <coughs> got, a, got a motion to approve. That's the Pine Acres. We got a second. Further discussions? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Oppose the same. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you. Wait a minute. Where, where do we sign this? Is what, you you got to write really tiny right here. Those three lines. <laughs> I couldn't even read our name. <laughs> Yahoo! There's a magic pen for you, buddy. seeing that you have the uh, Redevelopment Commission annual report there in front of you, I'll just make a quick mention of that. The uh, Redevelopment Commission approved their annual report at their last meeting, and per state statute, it has to be presented to the uh, executive uh, and fiscal bodies of the unit by April 15th. So that's what's there before you. Um, if you have questions for me or on behalf of the Redevelopment Commission, we have to address them. It's very similar to previous to last year's. It doesn't require any action on our parts, right? No. Nope. Okay. Nope. The only action was on the part okay. of the Redevelopment Commission to actually it. file it with you. Okay. I will, I will say with the redevelopment, we've been very fortunate to, uh, to be able to to do what we've done with uh, uh, promoting economic development and uh, even with sewer di district or sewer problems to take care of it out there. So it's been a, a, a great um, benefit to Whitley County. Yes. Very important asset. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have Scott Wagner, who is our uh, um, health department, uh, um, the head of the health department on junk, trash, court order, and a, some septic work. Okay, I gave you a copy here this morning uh, or this afternoon with uh, the court order for 7240 East US 33. It's owned by Metro Real Estate out of Fort Wayne. Uh, we better give them orders last fall, early last fall, late last summer to uh, fix their septic issues that they have. Um, the septic there is from the 60s, and any time that somebody occupies that residence, it bleeds into the neighbor to the west. And then they also had, at that time, three boats um, without trailers or you know, conditions there. So the order allows us to hire a contractor to take the one boat that's still there with the trailer and then to abandon the septic tank. So that, in effect, um, makes the house unsuitable for habitation. Uh, the house right now, the garage has several of its metal roofing removed and a couple windows are broken on the house. So nobody's occupying that residence right now. Um, I would, uh, if approved, uh, send out bids to our normal contractors. 30 days later, come back to the commissioners to do that bid. I would see that this would cost more than a couple thousand dollars. Okay. And then it just goes on the tax bill? Correct. We would have Jenna put that on the tax bill then to be paid. I, uh, I don't know if you were involved or not. I had a little issue with them last year about cutting the weeds when you drove when you were driving up Blue Lake Road approaching 33. You couldn't see to the left because right. the the weeds were so bad. But they did right. eventually. It doesn't really keep up with the property at all. No, right? not at all. And this is no. this is not the first complaint or order that we've given him for this property. No, 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 mm -mm. no. Okay. What do you need from us? Just an approval to go ahead and let bids or... Okay. I make a motion that we uh, give Scott the approval to let bids to make sure this, this place gets taken care of. 
Second. Okay, we've got a motion to approve uh, <coughs> uh, Scott to uh, um, do a further process on the uh, um, disorder. And uh, we've got a second. Any further discussions? Yeah, you, you bring those bids back Correct. before. You have to approve them before I can. Yeah. 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 All right. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, <coughs> the same. Just an update for you on the existing bid that we've approved for several months ago for Mike Wilcoxon at the property at West Division Road. I've been out there every couple weeks to check the progress. Um, uh, unless it, <laughs> there's a miracle happen, I don't know how he's going to have that done by the May deadline. It's still really quite cluttered. Um, so I'll, I'll be coming back with that once that, <coughs> that extension has expired. We gave him an extension, right? Of 60 days. And that's going to expire? And the f after uh, should be probably the second meeting in May. Mm. I'll come back with that. So now what do you suggest? Oh, man, that's up to you guys what you want to prefer. I mean, obviously, legal counsel will say you, if somebody doesn't fill up to their contracted, they can, you can remove that contract. You won't have to pay him for what he's had. But we're going to have to hire somebody after that to clean that mess up. And, and if I remember right, there was a, a big difference between the bids. Right. There was a gentleman a couple hundred dollars more than him, which was his ex-partner, and then the next bid was 10000 now there has been some things removed, so I wouldn't expect it to be that much. But the majority of things removed were the more uh, things you got money for. So there's more trash left behind than there is valuable metal. Sure. Yeah, I get the good stuff out of there. Wow. Yeah. I got nothing. Anything else? I guess you just wait till, a, wait till the deadline. He's, he's got a date, yep. so. I'll be back after that. Let's hope he meets it. That would okay. be the best outcome. Hopefully the weather cooperates here. The weather has been difficult, yes. Yes, yeah. Thank you, Scott. Brandon Forrester, Highway Department update. He's not. He's <laughs> absent. There he is. Oh, there he is. There he is. So I did. We wake you up. I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. Brandon is our highway engineer and uh, uh, head of the highway. <coughs> so I believe you have a right-of-way cut permit, and I have another. That'll be the most time-consuming thing if you okay. want. Okay. Okay. We have a right-of-way permit. MediaCon or CenturyLink? Central CenturyLink. Oh, Central 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 okay. Country Road South 350 West to bore underneath or from the pedestal and under 350 North to the customer. Brandon's okay to go. Yeah. approve it. Second. Motion to approve. We got a second. Further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, the same. Thank you, Brandon. And uh, here are actually two more. Uh, Indiana Fiber Network um, is applying. Uh, County Road 200 North, County Road 550 East, and then the line continues down along State Road 205. Um, there were things involved with this project, and the range board did approve the this morning for that. And I've okay BCF those. Is this for the fiber going to part or part thirty and uh, uh no, it's just long two oh five so well, I'm not sure Okay. And right. Yeah. Great big cell tower. Yeah, we had good discussion on the, at the range board this morning, so I move we approve this. Second. Okay, we've got a motion to approve. <coughs> we got a second. Any further discussions? 
All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, the same. Thank you. And the third and final Friday wake up permit is on South 300 East. It's just a service going across the road. See, these are coming in through. Okay, okay. And you've approved that one then, Brandon? Yes. Okay. Okay, okay which is the one that we haven't done well, yet? Well, this is, you know how we usually get them packaged in threes? This is the same project with three different... Three copies. Three yeah. different copies, so... Excuse me. We haven't approved this one yet. Okay. I make a motion we approve the installation of duct bidirectional boring, um, South County Road 300 East. Second. Okay, we've got a motion. We've got a second. Any further discussions? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, the same. Thank you. snowed today, but we don't care. We're taking V Sanders out of trucks. We're you that nine. confident, huh? We're, we're <laughs> yeah, confident or, um, yeah, that we'll call it that. <clears throat> um, it's been a rough spring as far as road conditions. We've been doing patching as much as we can. Um, had quite a bit more patching to do this year than last year. Uh, we've also had quite a few gravel roads that needed some attention, and so we've been hauling stone and trying to get those graded. Uh, we're looking forward to weather break so we can try some new equipment out on some of those gravel roads. Uh, we've done a little bit of drainage work, some culverts and some ditching. Uh, you know, right now is just not the best time for that but doing what we can and we've been stockpiling and we got a pretty big pile of number 11 limestone out at the yard in anticipation of chip sealing this year so that's what we've been having the guys do for the last couple weeks um, been working with Kevin and Joe on um, doing a striping inventory for pavement markings so we when we chip seal something we don't lose what we had um, been working on a five-year plan. We have the guys pasered all the roads. Um, we've got a pretty good plan for this year. We're looking at, at about 100 miles of, of work. And, uh, but we have to submit a five-year plan. So we're kind of trying to look at multiple aspects, drainage, uh, general condition, and make a five-year plan. Um, I am still working on some estimates for some of the things that I've spoken to commissioners and council about in the last month or so. Um, should have more information on that later this week. I'm going to work with Ask Jana to go through things with me and we'll um, file the paperwork to do some additional appropriations for the May 9th council meeting. And um, I've written 
at least a draft or a job description for the, the new employee position that I'm proposing. And um, that's available if anybody wants to review that. Basically, um, I started with our operator position and added some drainage duties. Um, I don't, I'm just guessing you're not going to get anyone to to do want to do that job for less than what the operators are making. Um, and so that's a new job description that you're looking new, at. A new job description. So I would ask that you would send that to the commissioners to for approval. Okay. And I did not insist that it go to the personnel committee since the personnel committee didn't have things in place yet. Okay. Specific guidelines to evaluate it. Okay. I'll, I'll email that to you this afternoon. Thank you. Um, other than that, that's all I had for now. Unless you got questions. On your five-year plan, are you <coughs> buying quite a bit new equipment, or how much equipment have you got planned for that? Um, well, last year we worked on a five-year equipment plan, and we haven't really looked at the equipment plan for the, you know, revising that plan. Um, right now we have six tandems, which is, well, it's three more than what we had three years ago. Um, and we've got a couple of older single axles, so we're talking about for the next couple years um, uh, shifting to single axles, getting some of those older ones replaced, and um, we also we have a, a one-ton dump that uh, needs to be replaced or add, you know, a new one added. The one that we have isn't completely worn out, but it's 180,000 plus miles and. So um, I do know I don't have that in front r with me. Uh, it's back on my desk, but I know we were looking at a one-ton dump and a single axle for, for next year. Okay. We're looking at probably, you know, this year was, we had 400,000 budgeted for equipment. We bought a new tandem, we um, bought several other pieces, a new tractor for mowing. So it'll be a third. Um, next year is not not that much. Um, and looking at our road plan, uh, we we need to keep putting money in the roads, definitely. And we're we're in pretty good shape equipment wise. I mean, you've got to keep at it. You don't want to let up. But did the new mowing tractor come in? Um, it is not at our facility yet. Um, the unit that we bought, um, we got a discount on because someone had ordered it and then backed out. So it came with a loader, and so they're taking that off. We don't need the loader. And then there was another, they had to add a valve um, to, to make the mower deck work that we're in. So it's, it's out at Morris right now. Um, I would expect we'd be getting it about any time. Further questions for Brandon? Thank you, Brandon. You, you and I and John still want to meet one of these days? We um, remember we talked about that. I I mentioned that I mentioned that um, he he suggested maybe that um, the chair or vice chair be involved. Um, I've reached out to both of them. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next on the agenda, we have Andrew Grossnickel for the Blue Lake Conservancy District. Good afternoon. Again, my name is Andrew Grossnickel, and I am uh, the attorney representing the Blue Lake Conservancy District. Uh, thank you very much for having us this afternoon. Um, the district had cause to be filed um, with the Whitley County Commissioners a petition to appoint a member uh, to the Blue Lake District's Board of Directors. Uh, there is a, currently a, a vacancy for uh, Area 2 um, of, the, uh, of the district. And uh, the, the board at the uh, April 2nd 
2018 uh, board meeting um, uh, authorized me to file a petition uh, with you all uh, and with a request to fill that vacancy uh, in their board and uh, along with that they recommended uh, Jerry working uh, uh, as the, uh, the person they wish for you to consider uh, to fill that vacancy. Uh, Mr. Working has been a uh, board member uh, of the Blue Lake uh, Conservancy District for about eight years. Uh, he is a freeholder uh, within the, the district boundaries um, and uh, he has experience uh, with serving this board, uh, understands um, what's necessary to um, um, carry out the, the duties uh, of a board member and uh, therefore uh, the district is requesting that uh, the Whitley County Commissioners fill that vac vacancy uh, and specifically to fill that vacancy with Mr. Jerry Working. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion that we fill the open vacancy with Lisa Waterman. She's a resident of Area 2, uh, Cherbusco lady. Okay, we've got a motion to uh, appoint uh, uh, Lisa Waterman. Lisa Waterman. Okay, to the uh, Blue Lake Conservancy District uh, representing Area 2. Second that motion. We've got a second. Do we have discussions? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Oppose the same. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next on our agenda is Randy Coco, EMS Dispatching. Thank you. It's good to be back. You know, when I left South Hawaii, it was like 75 and sunny. You liar. Because right. <laughs> <laughs> I say that well, about Cherubus School all the time. I, I was inside. But, <laughs> uh, good afternoon, Commissioners, and uh, greetings from the people of South Whitley. Uh, last year I spent most of the spring and summer months in this very room attempting to persuade you of the benefits of local dispatch. The message has not changed. The message is simple. Local, well-trained professionals familiar with the people, area, landmarks, dispatching for their own. It's a concept that has been used for decades in law enforcement, fire, and most recently EMS. One phone call, one dispatch, alerting all responders. Imagine yourself in this situation. You're on a county road taking your walk. No one is around and you notice something red in the distance. You can't quite make out what it is, so you keep walking. The closer you get, it appears it's a person. So you run towards them, and you find a young man wearing red jogging shorts and a t-shirt. You say to him, hey, are you okay? And he doesn't respond. You look around for, for help, and you see that there's no houses, just fields. You feel helpless and stressed, so you take your phone out of your pocket and you nervously dial 911. You're connected to an EMS dispatch a county away. They ask the questions, tell me your address. I don't know my address. I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Sir, I need your address. I don't know the address. I was just taking a walk in the country. Hurry, I don't think he's breathing. Now, you're already anxious finding this stranger who needs help. Now imagine if it was your spouse. What if it was your child? The feeling of helplessness and anxiety would be multiplied times 100. Not to worry. In this situation, your county dispatch is listening in the background 
obtaining the latitude and longitude of the caller and getting help to that scene. When you call 911, you are reaching out to a stranger saying, I need help. Our local 911 communication center answers the call, works to put the caller at ease, assures them, I will help you through this. I will say, I will stay right here with you and we will get through this. I think sometimes we underestimate the impact our 911 center has. Efficiency, knowledge, compassion. I encourage each of you to come down to the dispatch and spend not just an hour, but rather a shift, two shifts. Not just a day, but an evening, a night. Witness for yourself the inefficiency of sending a medical call to another center. I have appealed to you on behalf of our community many, many times. Residents of South Whitley and Cleveland Township have spoken their displeasure many, many times. <coughs> Elected officials have come to you countless times. I have expressed my concern to each of you individually, yet 510 days have passed without change. This is not about Lutheran or Parkview or ABC Ambulance Company or the care they provide their patients. This is about how our county communication center can more efficiently provide all the resources required in an emergency. This is about a community reaching out to our county officials for help in dispatching our local ambulance and being met by roadblock after roadblock. It is time we work together for a resolution for the people of South Whitley and Cleveland Township. We have failed them. Let's make this right. Thank you. Randy, can I ask you, um, you're involved in the system, you work with our 911 system. Um, doesn't this, this system work for Huntington, LaGrange, Noble? Don't they use the same system? Honestly, I'll say it's adequate. They okay. They they get an ambulance to the to the scene. Okay. Um, we as commissioners, we've listened to you, and, and you've been here, and, and we we're not ignoring you at all. The only the only thing I can tell you is that we worked an agreement out with Parkview is really good about working with us. We have a commitment to Parkview, a legal commitment to Parkview, to uh, to try to. Uh, um, appease South Whitley, what we've done is, is we've gone to Parkview, and Parkview has actually said that they would work with the with Lutheran Ambulance, and they would provide an ambulance uh, uh, dispatching for them as appropriate, meaning that they'll keep their ambulance down there, Lutheran could have their ambulance, and it provides two ambulance service for, for Whitley, South Whitley. Um, they have approximately 1.2 rounds a week, is, is that's about I think what we've looked at um, I guess I, I don't understand is why that isn't it works for for Lutheran Lutheran was willing to accept that but the town of South Whitley uh, Lutheran is a business decision the town of, of South Whitley why for the safety and for the benefit of of their residents why won't you accept that there is a two ambulance service rather than one because I think our county dispatch can more efficiently dispatch an ambulance for our county. Let me give you an example. The other night I was working, uh, there was an accident on uh, 700 North and 250 West. A SUV ran into a utility pole and there were lines down. Uh, of course, we sent our first responders and, and our officers, and we transferred the call to, uh, to Parkview. Early on the call, they said, now, that's 700 West and 250 North. No, 
It's 700 north and 250 west. The medics got there, there were lines down and they couldn't get to the patient, so they called in and they, they asked, can you send a helicopter, can you send Samaritan to the scene because we don't know what we have. And uh, they, they, got, they got back to Samaritan and they checked and they couldn't fly. So they, they relayed that information to the medics on ground and one of the medics said, can you, can you call Lutheran and see if they're available to fly? And their response was, it is our policy, if we can't fly, we will not contact another service. Scott, is Scott, Gabriel, Scott, yeah. would you like to respond to that, please? Well, I don't want to get into the details of that particular example because I assume that was a weather condition when you were able to put a bird in the sky at that particular time. Uh, but I think in the general concept of what you're commenting to, you know, the centralized dispatch, what it really enables us to do is not only mobilize vehicles in this county, but every county we serve. Um, if there's an ambulance that's closer to a scene that's coming from Noble or Huntington, we're able to mobilize those assets. Um, we've actually improved time since we went to a centralized dispatch. So we have no data that shows that there's any risk or we've done anything but other than improve it to the residents of South Whitley and every other county. Uh, Scott, I encourage you to come down to dispatch and uh, spend some time with us too. Because I think you would realize if you're actually working there, right there, that that's not the case. Yeah, I can't, I can't argue with unfactual things. Okay. It's, it's an invitation that's that open. It's, it's an invitation time. that's open to you anytime. Okay. The other thing I'll quickly point out also that I think has been, and Dwayne can talk to several stories of this, what we've been able to do is these are trained medical professionals who are receiving these phone calls. And oftentimes, your scenario that you gave on so like Billy about the gentleman on the side of the road, where we get hands on chest rather quickly in many, many examples, which is far more important than it is time to the scene. Can you answer, answer this for me, Scott? Is the training and the, the process that you use at Parkview Dispatch, is it any different than what, what we use at Whitley County Dispatch? Okay, so a paramedic that's sitting behind the desk 40 miles away, are they any more effective uh, in relaying the information on, on uh, the medical dispatch end of it? They, they simply have to ask the same questions, correct? They can't deviate from those questions just because they're a paramedic. That's correct. Okay. So let me, let me re-clarify this. So the questions that they are asking are going to be the same questions that we are asking. And, and let, me make this, make, let me make this point also. All of our dispatchers in the county are EMD certified. We have to be EMD certified because if there's some sort of a lapse in the service that we transfer that call, we have to be able to take that call. So I just want to make that point. But you know, if we can if we can work together and find a resolution, that would be great. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Randy. And, and I just need to, to say, from my perspective, I was dispatched a lot of years by Whitley County Sheriff's Department, and they they did a superb job. I've never been dispatched by Parkview. I can't say, but. I've got a lot of runs under my belt here in here in Whitley County, and Whitley County Sheriff's Department has done a superb job. Thank you. Uh, you know, there's a lot of dedicated people that uh, that work there. They work countless hours, and and uh, yep, they're, they're good people. And Another point I want to make here, real quick, because I've I've made this point before, and it still comes across wrong. This group is. I'm going to tell you what we're not doing. We're not telling South Whitley they can't have an ambulance. Now, somehow that still comes out wrong. 
I hear it all the time. I read it on Facebook all the time. Well, they won't let them have an ambulance. Wrong. The law specific, the, the commissioners have to see that there is an, e, an organized EMS system in a county. That, that's, that, that's our job. We have to do that. It's always been our job. But we could have 100 systems. We can't control if they If, if they choose they want to go with Lutheran, we don't, we don't have a control over that. But the issue here is whether or not the Whitley County Sheriff Dispatch can dispatch an ambulance. So I just, I just want to make those points clear. Thanks, Randy. Yeah, thank you. And I would like to add to that that it would end up being two different dispatches for EMS services. And, and every time you try to, um, to add uh, to a situation, it causes a lot of uh, uh, difficulties. And, and that's one reason that personally that I think that uh, the, the system that we've got is, is a good system. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Okay, next on the agenda, we've got minutes. Has everyone had a chance to take a look at the minutes? Move we approve them as second. presented. Okay, we got a motion to approve minutes as presented. We've got a second. Further discussions? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Oppose the same. Thank you. Okay, I think Don took, had a chance to take a look at claims. I did, and I'd make a motion that we approve the payroll claims for this period. Got a motion to approve payroll <coughs> claims. We've got a second. Further discussions? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed the same. Thank you. With regard to the other claims, it's, um, I, I, I present these claims with kind of a smile on my face. A couple of couple of cool things have happened. Um, number one, we were able to... Brandon, did you leave the room? Did he? Okay, sorry about that. Um, we were able to make the $64,000 payment to Allen County. So if memory served me correctly, I think we still owe them 30, but I'm not sure about that. But anyway, we, we got that, that payment made and I feel bad about that. Um, and the other one was uh, the loans paid off. Whew. Yeah, thanks to everybody for working hard to see that that got taken care of. That's a big, we should, we should breathe a sigh of relief right. from that, so. And then the other is we bought a $280 battering ram. So, <laughs> just funny things I see when I look at claims. <laughs> I make a motion we approve the claims as presented. Okay, we've got a motion to, <coughs> uh, to approve the claims, the regular claims, as presented. Second. We've got a second. Further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed the same. Thank you. Did you have anything? Open enrollment for group benefits. 
will be occurring in May. Right now, the proposed date to begin that is May 21st, but we're going to try to adjust that to occur a little sooner and it will run for a full month. We need to have all changes made by June 18th for payroll. So that's why we're going to try to bump it back or sooner. Okay. Bump it up. And the safety committee met on Friday. The I 13th. Kept, I'm sorry, what? The most unsafe day, Friday <laughs> the 13th. Friday. Um, we discussed some recommendations from IPEP, which is the Indiana Public Employers Plan, who is our carrier for workers' compensation. And um, we had discussed that they offer a grant safety, um, or they're offering a grant for safety equipment. And so um, Commissioner Amber had suggested that I bring it to the county as a whole to see if any department would be interested in applying for the grant for the funds are available in 2019 it's due in June or July um, and you'll be notified in August multiple departments can apply but you apply all under one county and then you can prioritize your needs um, and when I spoke with Elise Friday afternoon after the meeting she just wanted to emphasize that we are aware that it is for the safety of the employee, not the public. Right, so right, 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 right. I just told her I would just reinforce that. So I'll be distributing that to each department to see if they would like to. Is there a certain okay. amount for that? that there was no maximum then? No, uh, no, and they cover 80% of yeah, it's an 80, 20. Mm -hmm, the cost of the training. Okay. So we're just going to have the departments reply to you, and then we'll make out one grant application. Correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sure, we can just pass them. So the sure. first page is just what um, IPEP had recommended for our specific um, county over the last two years of incidents. The second page is just um, things that she wanted to see our safety committee do. And then the third is the grant application, along with the recipients of the grant from 2017. So I will complete page one, but page two would be completed by any department that wanted to apply for the I feel pretty pretty confident that we've really met this goal. Mm -hmm. okay. Since she had sent that Friday, I just thought I would also. Okay. Friday okay. afternoon, I right. spoke on the phone again. Yeah, okay. I agree. Okay. And then that's all I have. Oh, go ahead. I thought I brought five, so maybe that's yours. And I really think that this has made a, a great, the safety committee has made a big difference for us. Uh, we used to get some lawsuits uh, pretty regular, and it's, uh, um, no. it's been pretty good the last. Serving as a years. chairman, I, I got to say, it, it's, it's really one of the coolest committees I'm on because everybody's pulling in the same direction. And these departments that that serve on the committee are just coming up with some terrific terrific ideas you know just leave them alone and they'll come up with great ideas and uh, so I'm really I'm really happy with the safety committee Good. they're oh. very proactive <coughs> very proactive um, and Amy Biggs is very beneficial and yeah. I will say that based on the incident that happened at the jail, Community Corrections had reached out to Amy, and they're working together to come up with some internal procedures, which I was very much impressed with. And depending on how it works for yeah. work release, we may institute some of those exact same policies. or not policies, procedures. I don't want to say changing, mm -hmm. but countywide based on how they go there. Well, we appreciate your guidance on that. Yeah. It's, a good, it's a good committee. They they really take it to heart. Anything That's else? all I have. No request for use of no, facilities. No, not at this time. Matt, did you have anything else? 
Jana. Commissioner. Not at this time. No, sir. Well, this is going to be an easy one. Anyone from the public have anything to say? Motion to oh. adjourn. Got a motion to adjourn. Second. And a second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose the same. Thank you. Sure. Those in favor say aye. Aye. <laughs> aye.